Welcome to another W2A4 video. In this video, I want to talk about servicing and what does it mean when you see a service indicator on your Mercedes Benz. Now specifically, I want to talk about the W204 because that is the car that I have. But this basically applies to most models 2009 above without add blue. My car doesn't have add blue, so I'm excluding that from this video. The service indicator has just popped up on my car. It is the B1 service. I did a bit of research and to break it down for you guys, there are two services for Mercedes Benz. You have the service A and the service B. Then you also have A1, A2, and then you also have B1 and B2. I also believe that it goes beyond that, like B3, B4. So what does all that mean? Basically, service A is a minor service, and service B is a major service. They basically consist of the same things, except B is more of a major service, and it is more extensive, and obviously it will cost a bit more. What service A entails is basically this. And what service B entails is basically this. So as you can see, the difference between the A and B service is that one is minor and the other is major. A being minor and B being major. And also, because the B1 service is due on my car, I also want to show you guys how to reset the service indicator yourself. That way you don't have to use something like a you know, professional scan tool or anything like that. This can be done yourself via the steering wheel and the instrument cluster. I'm going to show you guys how I basically do it, what I do, but I won't go into too much detail because I've done bits and pieces throughout the last year. Um, I really only have to focus on the oil change, the oil filter, and bleeding the brakes and replacing the brake fluid. But I'll save that for another video. This video is basically just to kind of explain what's involved in an A service, what's involved in a B service, and how you reset the service indicator on your Mercedes-Benz. This also applies to other models after 2009. Depending on the model of your car, it may be different. I can only really assure you that it works for the W204. What we're going to do here is put this side of the fluid transfer pump inside the oil dipstick. That way it can reach the, all the way to the bottom of the oil pan and get as much oil as possible from the oil pan. It will simply transfer it over to this canister right here, just like this, and just tuck this in and collect all the oil. This is simply powered via a 12 volt battery. Let's get into it. I'll pull my dipstick out, put this into our oil dipstick all the way to the bottom and turn it on. You will see the oil coming out of the engine into the oil canister. Okay, now that I've drained out all the oil, I'm just simply going to remove the oil cap. Now you could remove this before or after, it doesn't really matter because it is the oil fluid transfer pump that did all the work. Remove this, undo the oil filter. Usually you can do this just by hand. You don't have to have it on that tight, but I guess mine is pretty tight. I've got a whole set of these for every single car. It comes with its own ratchet and basically it tells you which size to use for what type of car. In this case, we're going to do Mercedes. It tells you the diameter and the teeth and it's 903. I've got 903 on there now. Put this on and we'll loosen it. Okay, once you have that loose, take that off, set it aside, undo it with your hand, grab a rag, we don't want to drip anything all over the car, Let's put on the rag, we're going to change the filter, the o-ring, the rubber o-rings here, and uh, we'll reinstall it. We'll remove this first, just by twisting it and pulling it down. In this case we're going to use a uh, k and oil filter. Number is PS7004, that's a reference number. Remove these O-rings first. 
Now you always use something like a pick tool, it just makes it so much easier to remove the O-rings. Let's remove this one. There we go, that just broke off. Lastly, there we go. Replace the O-rings. We have one to replace the big one. And then we've got to this size the smallest one will go on the very front put that over slide it over the top there we go the bigger one will sit here Let's just get that on use your pick tool try not to pierce the o-ring at all just get under it so you can get it over it that's it bring it all the way around just like that lastly our big one you want it to sit in this groove here okay that groove right there so just get it work it around get it in that groove all the way around and voila that's it there's always a rule of thumb when it comes to reinstalling this and that is you should always grab a little bit of oil and lube your rubber o-ring old new doesn't really matter as long as you've got some oil on there okay i just get some oil put it all the way around the o-ring this is very important it's stuff something that you have to do or it can tear the uh o-ring and then it won't seal properly and you'll probably get an oil leak we'll now reinstall this and uh fill back in our oil and we're done If you look carefully, you can see that uh, when this was originally tightened, you see that green dot there that matches my oil filter? That lets me know that that's when it's nice and snug. So I'm just going to follow that and that's it. Perfect. This is the oil I will be using. It is Mercedes-Benz recommended MB approved 229.5. That's what you're looking for when you want to use oil for a Mercedes-Benz. You definitely want that approval just fill it up we'll check the oil level as we fill it when i touch this cloth notice the oil stain goes to there so that was sitting just like that our oil is now at the correct level so we are done with the oil service remove this where the oil filter is i'm just gonna Use this engine degreaser and uh, spray a little bit there and just to clean off any of that oil. Grab another cloth, wipe off all that. Now we can replace this. Perfect. At this time, you want to check everything your washer fluid level. Make sure you've topped up everything with the appropriate amount of fluid. Have a look at my brake fluid as well as my coolant. Once everything is up to scratch, we know we can just jump in the car and simply reset the service indicator. Okay, we check our fluids. Make sure it's all good. Okay, make sure there's no crusty bits on your coolant. You know, it's very important. Beautiful. No crusty bits, coolant is all good. Check the level of your coolant. Make sure it's at the right height. Coolant's good. Brake fluid level's good. Washer fluid level's good. Okay. Now all we need to do is reset the service indicator so we'll jump in the car and i'll show you guys how you can do that in order to reset it all you have to do is put your key in turn it to the first and ensure you are on your odometer okay as you can see there now all you really have to do is hold call and okay call first then okay and hold it 
just hold it as you can see it comes up with vehicle data roller test and assist plus you want to go down using this key go down down to assist plus press ok and full service you want to scroll all the way down and confirm the full service oil grade ours was 229.5 as you saw so we just go down to 229.5 right there press enter oil grade 229.5 service carried out yes full service cannot be undone confirm full service completed And that's it that's all there is to it in here you can also see things like your service data workshop code service codes you know now it tells you how many days remaining until your next oil data record okay if you go back and you go to roller test you can do things like this roller test but i'm not going to mess with any of that vehicle data tells you your battery voltage you know hardware continental software version things like that okay it tells you all these type of information your assembly number you know I don't really understand what most of this means but I'm just reading out what it's displaying okay into assist plus next a service in 365 days so yeah that's basically how you reset your service indicator